Todd in Washington, we appreciate it. And we're going to continue this conversation right now with Pennsylvania Democratic Congressman Joe Sestak. Congressman uh, Sestak, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Congressman Sestak, so you heard what Chuck Todd just shared, the sense that while Democrats, particularly during the Obama campaign, had been unusually adept at organizing, that maybe there's been a shift and that maybe, in fact, instead of complaining about what the Republicans are doing, Democrats need to get their own uh, uh, coordinating grassroots organizing mojo back. Is that how you see some of the town hall uh, chaos and dissension that's emerged over the last several weeks? It's exactly how I feel. How can we complain? We actually are tough taking on a tough problem, health care reform, where we haven't had an effort like this since the Clinton administration. I'm a public servant. I've only been in politics three years, and I had a town hall the day after we left Congress. And yes, I had those that came and were quite vociferous, but I also saw a lot of good people that had come and were just very anxious because I don't believe we have done a good enough job of messaging of what's good in this bill. I'm actually having Wednesday night in the center of Philadelphia uh, uh, at Broad Street Ministry another town hall, open it up to everyone. Uh, we have to listen, but more than that, we also, having done what we should have prepared better, to get out there and explain what's good in this bill and why, if you have health insurance today, you're going to actually be paying less in co-pays. You're actually not going to be able to be denied any longer the ability, if you have a pre-existing condition, not to get health insurance. And that goodness is our responsibility to explain to people, and we shouldn't, as leaders, be backing down. We should be out there leading. Congressman Sess, I guess it's interesting you say that because Mort Zuckerman and I were discussing uh, that this morning. In fact, Mort, I'll let you jump yeah, in on this. Well, I mean, you have two problems. One is there is clearly a great deal of growing unease about the health care program, you not only have to address the good parts, you also have to deal with the concerns. And where you have a sense that the health care program is going to cost, God knows, a trillion, a trillion and a half dollars instead of really reducing the health care costs, which was the original concern about runaway health care costs, you've got to find a way to address that in terms that people can understand. And that has been a signal failure, it seems to me, so far of the democratic approach to the health care program. How do you address Absolutely. First, we need to say why this is good. Much as the New York Times editorial said so well, the Massachusetts health care plan has done very good things in step one. But step two is the cost. And we have to be upfront about that. The cost is budget neutral. We found $550 million in Medicare savings without cutting any benefits at all. And the Congressional Budget Office verified that. Second, are we raising revenues from the top 1% of the wage earners of America that got 53% of all the tax tax cuts from the Bush era? Yes, we are. But it's a budget neutral approach and we need to be upfront about that. Step two is beginning to cut the cost curve down as we begin to get preventive care, early diagnosis, and you see the savings accrue in years to come. That's the approach we have to do. But this effort of ours is budget neutral with the exception of the Medicare 21 percent cut in physicians pay that would have happened anyway outside this plan. So that's why we have to be out there letting people People know it is a pay-as-you-go effort. But if you have a health care program that is perceived by the country to be too expensive today, to say revenue neutral is not the right objective. You've got to find a way to constrain these costs. And it's not just a question of adding taxes. I'm certainly in favor of adding taxes on the wealthy, but you're going to need some of that tax revenue to deal with the budget deficits. And with everybody in America understanding the problems of debt, people are now really concerned about adding to the national debt. Very you're not addressing point. those points. Yes, but yes, we are. Here's why, sir. You, as an individual, will pay $400 on your private health care plan today to cover the uninsured. Because when they go into an emergency room, the hospital passes it up to the insurance company when you go in for your care as overhead. We're saying bring in the uninsured and pay for it up front. We're merely shifting the cost to be more direct. And second, we are not adding to the debt with this proposal. Do we want to, over time, get the economy going again with small businesses be giving tax credits and tax cuts rather than big oil so we can get entrepreneurship to be the norm, not the exception, and then have the revenues. As we control entitlement spending, which we must do, and we should have done a better job this year in setting the stage for doing it, and we must next year, then we get the economy going again with the right revenues. No, health care reform is needed because not doing it means we lose $100 billion a year 
and lost economic output. This is not just the right thing to do for individuals. Our economy needs it. And that's the argument that Democrats have to get out there. And I intend to do that Wednesday evening, 630, the Broad Street Ministry here in Philadelphia. <laughs> hey, hey, Congressman Sessak, <laughs> I got to tell you that you fired me up. You woke me up this morning. And, I, and so I've got to ask you, as someone who's announced early, you're running against an incumbent Democratic senator, an Arlen Specter, longtime Republican who, uh, who switched to the Democrats recently. What kind of reception are you finding, not just within Pennsylvania, but outside that? Are you hearing from other Democrats who are thinking about an intra-party challenge to one of their incumbents at all? I have to say the only ones I'm listening to are Pennsylvanians, the working families. I went to all 67 counties in three weeks in, Pe in July. And what I know is this and why I'm fired up. I'm fired up because somehow Washington, D.C., and while I respect Arlen Specter, he's been there 30 years, didn't keep in mind the working family, the engine of our economy. Somehow the tax cuts that I mentioned that went to the wealthy, somehow the deregulation of Wall Street, somehow the tax incentives to ship jobs overseas as he voted with President Bush, meant that we only let those who prospered from the economy Reap the rewards, not those that are the engine. So am I fired up? My gosh. We have to, in Washington, D.C., listen to the people, as these town halls are meant to do, even those who criticize us. But it's the working family that truly needs a warrior out there for the next 30 years in Pennsylvania. Is this, is this the first time you've said that, Congressman? No, I've been saying this for quite some time in different words. Every time it's different, but the meaning's the same. Principle over politics. Heaven forbid if we can't recapture that in Washington, D.C. Congressman Sessak, we've got to leave it there, but definitely appreciate you joining us this Thanks morning. I for look forward to having you back again soon. Thank so you.